Welcome back. So I'm getting a little bit behind on the videos here because I've been actually getting quite a bit of flying in each evening and you know working on uh, adjustments and changes during the day. So this is from a few days ago and, and I actually think I'm going to be behind now for a couple of days until I get caught up here. Um, but anyway this was after the bumpy flight and so the purpose of this um, flight was to test out the um, adjustments I made to fix the little oil leaks that I was having out of some of the fittings uh, with that new plumbing I put in for the oil cooler and as I ended up discovering uh, after this I fixed a couple of them but then a couple just even didn't matter how much I tightened up those fittings they were leaking and I guess I learned my lesson on this is uh, to not try and shortcut it so what I had done instead of draining the oil out and you know, cleaning up the fittings and everything and then just basically uh, tightening them up when they're all clean. I had let a little bit of oil drain out as I switched the hoses and, and put the, the different length hoses on there to plumb in the oil cooler. And unfortunately, when there's oil running out like that, um, even just the slightest little bit of um, dust or dirt or whatever in the oil was in between the fitting on the AN fittings there and no amount of tightening was going to make them have a proper seal so uh, trying to shortcut it by not draining the oil just basically cost me time and that so anyway what I had to do um, after this flight was basically do that go ahead and uh, drain the oil out so there wasn't any oil coming out any of those fittings or lines or whatever and then clean up the fittings and then uh, go ahead and uh, reseat them all and then you know basically put the oil back in um, so I'm using the same oil again still because I don't think it's time to do an oil change yet and I can't be doing an oil change every time I have to change a hose for some reason. Uh, so that's what's going on there but anyway this flight ended up being um, about um, 35 minutes long and you know as you can see there um, you know made some decent altitude on there and uh, the new oil cooler seems to be working although um, not 100% happy with it yet because again just the original test or the initial test was going to be just having it so the air that's running through that is air coming from inside the cowling which obviously is not ideal and you'll see subsequent to this video when I uh, show you I believe the next one or the one after I've actually gone and uh, opened up the bottom of the cowling uh, so fresh air can feed into that oil cooler now and I've got some more other changes coming ahead because right now um, everything's performing great with the engine I just still need to get more cooling and as I said as you'll see coming up I'm making some other changes there to, to give me that extra cooling because uh, you know the problem is I can climb but not at full power and eventually things just get too warm so most of these flights have been climbing at like 60% throttle um, which is only about 50% power when you've got the prop dial back uh, so you know it climbs okay but it's not ideal you certainly can't get up to super high altitudes when you're having to climb at such a low power setting yeah, as you can see there I was basically up about uh, 3600 according to the GPS there I've also made um, an adjustment to that static port as well. I've, I've made the little fence that I had underneath there a little bit larger. So it's catching a little bit more air and forcing it into the hole there under the static port and uh, driving the pressure up a little bit, which is you know giving me a lower altimeter um, setting and also lowering the airspeed um, indication. So I think I'm heading in the right direction with that. It's just a case of dialing it in and uh, you know, getting getting it to capture just the right amount of um, you know forced pressure from the air. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty smooth out on this flight, and I think I'm going to start doing this uh, in the evenings now because uh, that's what happens around here. The wind dies down around about five o'clock, and the sun right now is setting just before six. So you know, if I take off right around five o'clock, um, I don't have uh, worry about so much turbulence or anything which is always nice 
and uh, it's a pretty time of the day to fly as well and it allows me, sort of gives me the day to make a bunch of changes and get everything ready or whatever and then uh, you know, pull the aircraft out uh, right before the sun starts going down and go for a flight. So I was actually really enjoying this one and I'm starting to get to the point now where I'm really comfortable uh, just in the aircraft. I don't feel sort of you know, nervous that something's gonna go wrong or whatever. Um, what I have noticed though, and I think it was after this flight or the subsequent flight to this one, that the uh, other seal in the uh, redrive, which is the main one that goes around the large flange at the back there of the redrive, um, the large flange on the prop shaft, that one has started to leak now as well. And I tried to see if I could find one of those in the Viton material, uh, but they don't make that seal in the Viton material. And the one that I have is um, already the most high temp one that's available and it's a 300 degree one so that one should be uh, okay and I think what's happened is it's this one that I have in there right now is just sort of worn because I think for a while there this particular seal was still in there when I wasn't running it with the full oil bath in the redrive so uh, anyway I've ordered a new one and that'll be here in uh, the next couple of days and then I'll be able to you know do the same thing again you know pull the redrive out, pull prop off, pull the redrive out and you know, have to press out that seal and, and put the new one in. But then after that, you know, all the seals have been changed and so it should be good. Just a uh, tiny little bit of oil leaking out of it, but you know, it's not gonna get better over time. So I just need, you know, to change it out now. Um, so that's just another thing on my list. So it's the, the cooling and, um, you know, Finishing off getting the oil leaks all sorted out now, so I don't have any more problems with that, apart from this changing out that seal when I get it. And, uh, you know, I've got to get this cooling sorted out so I can, you know, climb to higher altitudes at higher power um, before I can really even do any full on performance testing of testing, you know, VX and VY because it's pointless having those numbers if they're um, got an asterisk next to them. Well, this is, you know, when you're only at 60% throttle. Um, I don't want to have to do that. And you probably already might have noticed that I didn't have uh, cabin uh, radio audio uh, for this particular flight. Um, I thought I pressed the record button on my little uh, mini recorder, but apparently I didn't. So, but I have in a subsequent flight. So I've got, I've got uh, since this flight, um, I've got three other flights that I've done um, that I haven't um, you know, uploaded the videos yet, so I'll be putting those out. I'm, I'm not gonna sort of skip anything, but I'll catch up. Tomorrow's supposed to be uh, a bit of rain day as well here, so I'll get probably another one out uh, tomorrow or the next day and try to get caught up. Um, but my plan is, you know, once um, I've got this other uh, new oil seal changed out, and I finished making these other uh, cooling modifications that I'm also working on right now. I want to try and you know get in these flights here like an hour every day at least, and that way I can sort of um, you know get through all the stuff I need to do for uh, you know getting the 40 hours flown off. Uh, as of this um, time now, when I'm recording this, I've actually done 17 flights altogether, and I believe I have um, seven seven hours just over seven hours on the aircraft already in the air so getting there and as you can see from this one where I was coming into landing here um, did a pretty quick descent there from 3600 feet and uh, I think this one here I was landing again on on 17 I believe we'll see I'm kind of getting a bit mixed up because I'm so far behind <laughs> on getting these videos done but of course you guys don't want to see a video every day either because you know if I'm putting out videos like that most people will end up saying oh I don't want to see it so they skip it and then they come back later oh what happened to this I missed that video so I'm gonna try and stick to my old schedule of two two videos a week uh, but because I've got some that I'm behind on right now I'll uh, try and get caught up on those as I can when when uh, you know, I've got downtime when the weather is uh, not cooperating 
or if I don't uh, have anything else to do or if I'm waiting on parts, sort of like I am right now. Um, but as I said, yeah, everything else is, is going really good. Um, with the aircraft there, I think the stability issue, I've had some discussions with some different people and stuff about the vortices coming off of the floor plane. And that's something, you know, that we can adjust going forward and figure out the best way to change those tips out. Um, possibly like a scimitar shape when you're looking on the plan view, uh, just to have them sort of curving backwards into a point rather than sort of be sort of Hershey bar square on the ends like I have them right now. May reduce uh, some of the vortices on there, but uh, this is something that we'll have the ability to test um, on a model uh, in a wind tunnel. Uh, once I get sort of sorted out and we've got everything happening over there on the west coast. So, because it'd be nice to uh, clean that up and reduce um, what's probably some drag that's being generated from those vortices coming off there. And as you probably already gather here, I'm on uh, the uh, left-hand base for runway 17 here. And I'm still still actually dialing in the landings here I don't want to come in too slow and drag it in but you know not having flaps that means I'm coming in you know uh, over the fence at at least uh, 105 and more comfortable uh, 110 right now because you know the aircraft uh, at least the four plane stops flying there at around about sort of 85 90 knots and I definitely want to have the mains on the ground uh, or touchdown already when I get to that speed. So that means I need to be, uh, you know, coming over the threshold there at about 100 knots. Because, you know, once you um, pull the power back to get it to slow down, uh, you've got to keep the nose up. And so that slows you down there from, you know, 100 knots to 95 pretty quickly. And then next thing you know, you've got 90 knots and uh, and the four plane wants to stop flying there and you start getting the alpha that's a bit high, but we'll see how this landing looks here. Yeah, see this was d decent. I was a little bit right of center line though. Um, but as I say, it's a case of, you know, figuring out exactly what the best uh, smoothest um, approach speeds are for this and obviously in the previous flight it was just let's just get this thing on the ground <laughs> so it was a bit crazy anyway so that's going to be this video and I'll look for another one um, in another day or so maybe tomorrow or the next day um, it'll be one of the two and we'll have the next flight for you which is the I think the, the next flight was the one that was an hour long obviously I won't show the whole thing but it's kind of boring but um, anyway, that's going to be the video. Thanks again for watching and tune in for the next one. Cheers.